Good morning and welcome to Fire in the Valley. Today we have myself, Mighty Pete, and we're joined by Dee Dee Larson. Good morning. Good morning, Pete. Thank you very much for coming on. Looking forward to this. So Dee, tell us, who are you? What are you doing? Where are you from? <laughs> Thanks so much, Pete, for asking me. Uh, Dee Larson. Uh, I am from Belfast. Uh, and my role is a conscious sexuality practitioner. So I work with intimacy, uh, body issues, uh, uh, anxiety, uh, shame, and sexual issues. Um, I work and teach individuals, couples. Um, I work uh, one-to-one -one sessions, group education, um, and yeah, that's my that's my uh, offering to the world. Wow, body conscious. I mean. Talk to me about, break that down for me. What does that mean and what does it look like? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, really, it's a kind of play on words. Um, personally, from my own experience, um, I grew up with um, anxiety or shame about how I was in my body and how I am in this in this earth and certainly um it was always a thing you know uh, getting changed or being naked is like a lot of thing about you know body body confidence um and that was okay I kind of held that and, and went off to university in, in England and realized when I lived in England that um Perhaps, um, you know, culturally, we were a little bit different here in how we were approached ourselves about nudity and sexuality and intimacy, um, and that we maybe didn't have conversations as easily about, about sex and our bodies. So, uh, so I had this kind of um, noticed this, this cultural difference, um, and that was okay. I lived in England for a long time, um, maybe 15 years. And 15 years ago, uh, then I came, I came back home to Ireland and um, my job, my training was uh, as a social worker. So I worked uh, with children and families, particularly kids who had been um, neglected or abused. And I worked um, in child protection and, and um, worked with abuse and, and, and trauma. And uh, that was fine. I, I got, you know, did, did my work and I, I did quite well in, in working for the Health Trust and, and uh, you know, moved up. And um, what I found was uh, there was like a certain level of depth that we could get to um, through uh, talking and working with people in crisis. And during that time as well, I also started to... Uh, do my own um, work into, um, you know, how I felt about my body. I'd had my own family, my own kids by then. And I started going to different workshops, uh, uh, women's retreats um, and tantra retreats, that kind of stuff. And um, really began to see uh, a connection. I was, all, I'd, I'd done a trip to India as well and, 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 and sort of seen how, I was taught about sex and sexuality and then how it's taught globally. And what I noticed um, really is how we're taught culturally um, about sex and intimacy is quite um, closed. And in some other religions, for example, um, you know, the Hindu religion, you know, sexuality is sacred, um, that, uh, you know, the, 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 the divine feminine and masculine in, 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 in unity, the Shiva Shakti in unity is, is like a really um, beautiful, it's based, the basis of the whole religion. So um, there's like a celebration and all the kind of erotic carvings and, and the temples all celebrate sexuality. Um, and I felt, you know, how we are taught about sex and intimacy is very, very different uh, to some other cultures. So I, I, I kind of had that in my head uh, with traveling. Uh, I'd come back to Ireland. I felt it quite closed. I was working with um, uh, sort of trauma and, and abuse in my job. Um, and I, I was doing my own personal development work. And what I recognized is there was a lot of kind of um, uh, holding 
in, in, in my body and um, cl cl closeness, um, you know, muscular and, 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 and everything else um, when it came to talking about sex and intimacy. Um, and there wasn't really a place that we could learn about, about intimacy and sex and sexuality and pleasure and connectedness. It was all really, if you were learning about sex, it was quite a functional kind of, this is what sex does, this is, this is the role. Um, so I, I kind of, you know, seen that there was a big massive gap. Um, and again, um, you're sort of talking about the body conscious. Um, what what I so 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 there's a few strands to that is is about um, you know being conscious of your body, but also uh, the work that I'd done with with um, abuse and trauma. What I was recognizing was that when we are uh, doing sessions with children or clients or families, when we're talking, we are connecting on a certain level to that person. So we are uh, working, we're having a conversation right now. And when we are engaging, we're talking from our analytical brain, our most evolved part of our brain, our prefrontal neocortex. So we're having um, considered conversation. When we are working with anxiety, trauma, shame, contraction, um, all, all those kind of things, these are the things that happen in the, in the more um, ancient part of our brain. Called, called called the limbic brain and when you work with um for example ptsd and all these kind of things um you're working with the with with if, you, if you're working with talk therapy you're only working with this part of the brain and you're not working with the older structures um, that actually control the autonomic nervous system and our how our body responds so what i find was that i would get deeper results if I supported people into their body. Um, what does that mean? That means how are you holding yourself? How are you breathing? Where are you breathing to? Are there any areas of tightness or tension in your throat, in your back, in your gut? And the gut is a very, very ancient, it's actually got uh, brain cells in it. Got a very ancient indicator of of uh, our, our felt sense in our body, and you may have heard of um, teachings around somatics or embodied counselling, but this is where we start to bring the body on board with how we're feeling. So body conscious came from uh, an idea of of anxiety around how we feel in our bodies and and, and everything else and how we're socialised about about our bodies but also being aware of our current felt sense in our bodies. So actually connecting the mind with the body. And when you work with an area such as intimacy, it's so important that we connect the body with, with our wants, our desires, our communication and everything else. Um, yeah, so that's what I would say where body conscious came from. I love that. I mean, and as you speak there, it's almost like the body is the portal to the mind. Does that make sense? Is that is that sort of that sensual, you know, nerve endings? It's 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 the it's the machine, if you like, that brings mm -hmm. our outside environment in. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Absolutely. I mean, we are we are receptors of of, of five senses, and how we're socialized and in our culture now. We, I would call it head dominant. So we, we value the brain the most and our brain is the, the most stimulated, most uh, celebrated part of our body. Um, you, know, we, we, you know, right now we're having this conversation, um, but, um, and you know, we're like you know, doing our, our devices and, and, and everything else is head, 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 everything else. But what happens when we slow it down and actually take a moment or two to become aware of what our current felt state is. So, so the, the, the bridge for doing that is the breath. So becoming aware of and then noticing, you know, your heart, your throat, areas of spaciousness, areas of contraction and what that's like. 
And certainly when we, when we work with the body, we work with a more authentic, real representation of who we are. So if we leave out the body and we're talking purely from, from the mind, we're, it's, it's like a superficial level. And the mind, the mind really has a certain part uh, of, of depth that we can go to, but the mind is also uh, there for our safety. So we, we, we will say things that we, we, we filter and we say, okay, that's, that's acceptable for me to say that, that's okay. That, that's a safe thing for me to say, that's, I won't be um, socially you know, outcast. And this is this is happening from you know when we're children, um, babies. Um, so we we learn about um, safety. We learn about filtering. We learn what's socially and culturally acceptable. We learn what we won't be shamed for. So a lot of the time, and and if you think about sex and intimacy, we're learning. Okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is how I'm supposed to act. This is what I'm supposed to want. So we're, you know, if you think about all the um, films and, and all the different things that you, you know, you've, you've absorbed through your, through your um, life, this is where we're learning about sex and intimacy through these kind of like mass media of information. But what would be more authentic in how we connect in intimacy is if we tune into our body and actually slow down and listen to a question, for example, what, what is it that I would like to experience in my body right now? And that can be very, very profound um, for people, especially people who have experienced uh, unwanted touch uh, in their body because the body can be a very uncomfortable place to go to. And that would be very, very common for, um, here, our culture here, uh, because the, the body is an uncomfortable place to go to, because the, you know this is the place of deep suppressed emotion. Um, this is the place for anxiety, tension, uh, old memories, trauma, all that stuff. So when we connect with the body, it can be a really um, some people you know find find real difficulty to go there. Um, some people it takes a, a lot a lot of practice but the stuff that comes up is is not always socially acceptable and is not always a comfortable place to be um, so so that's how I support my uh, the people that I work with I'm somatically trained and soma is, is the Greek word for body and uh, also I, I work with um, I'm, I'm a yoga practitioner myself and I'm, I'm, I'm training to, to offer that as well in a, from a somatic perspective um, but that really really interests me is is harnessing more and more awareness of our current felt self sense in our body that's my one of my key things that I love to do can you break down and explain somatics for us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a field of uh, practice called somatic experiencing um, and soma, the word soma is the Greek word for body, okay, and really it is the, the, the godfather of somatics is Dr. Peter Levine and he uh, works specifically with trauma and what he is saying is um, when we work somatically, so when we work uh, involving the body in the response, we, we work with a person's entire history. So one of uh, Dr. Peter Levine's quotes is, um, the trauma is in the nervous system, not in the event, okay? So say, for example, someone's had a car accident, okay? Um, and you ask them about the car accident, okay? Um, maybe, you know, five or 10 years later. And they're starting to describe the car accident. And you might notice, um, you know, how their face changes and they become more animated or they're, they're describing it or they're speaking more quickly or they're not taking a breath. And they're becoming like a little bit agitated and, and um, you know, breathless. And this can be, you know, any kind of experience it can be, you know, 
you know, we just, we hear people describe things all the time that have really, really got to them. And this, this, um, the, 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 the experience uh, of, of the nervous system being in, in um, sympathetic arousal, so like fight or flight, and the, the adrenal and the, the, the cortex is all flying around the body. Again, it's almost like the body is, is, is remembering um, the experience and it's becoming more and more agitated and animated uh, or, or in f fight or flight, you know, like it, 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 that, that kind of thing. And it's almost like um, there's, there's a school of, um, uh, about a tra trauma release. It's almost as though the body has to sequence um, a series of events to be able to process it. So if you experience an adverse situation where you're in fight or flight, um, you, you, you have all this adrenaline. And if you aren't able to sequence that event, I either run away or, 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 or you know, stop the event from happening and, and get, get the event out of the nervous system, the, the body is holding on to the fascia tendon tissues, cellular kind of membrane is holding on to that memory. And you, we spoke just before this call about uh, conscious and unconscious. It actually does it unconsciously. And when we work somatically, what we're doing is we're bringing what's held in the body from the unconscious into the conscious, and hence, you know, body conscious. So we are actually becoming aware of what we hold. And that can be a time when we... Um, you know, we're in fight or flight or in fear or in anxiety. It can be a time when we experienced a very strong emotion. Uh, and, and one of the most difficult emotions that, that um, I, I work with is shame. Okay. So shame is, is, is a contraction, is a fear, is a, is a you know, is, a, is, 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 a, is an emotion where we're, we're felt, you know, different and not accepted. Okay. So shame is a very... Um, uh, con contracting kind of emotion but why shame is so difficult to work with is there is a level of secrecy and covering up that we don't want to be open about this emotion because we feel so deeply different and that that what we are is so different to the people that we want we want to be connected with so we cover it up and we have layers and layers and layers of defense mechanisms and, and ways of not going into that shame. And when you're working with intimacy, body image, sex and, 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 and uh, pleasure, shame is really, really, can be really, really enmeshed. Depending on how we were taught about sex and pleasure, shame can be really, really enmeshed in there. And shame can live in, in the body. And shame is, is one of the most difficult things to deal with, but also in there, you know, you can have um, deep sadness, longing, uh, disconnect. Uh, you can have loneliness. Uh, you can have pure joy and um, enthusiasm and excitement. But if it does, if it's not safe to express that emotion and, and sequence the emotion, then we hold it in our body. And the more embodiment practices you do, so for example, if you did, um, you know, an asana, a morning sequence, and you were doing, a, you were doing an asana, and you were opening part of your, your um, opening your chest or opening your body out, and you breathe in, sometimes uh, a feeling can come in the body, and it's it's um, it's un, almost unexplainable. It can be, you know, joy or laughter or a memory, but sometimes that 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 emotion can come in the body. And, um, you know, sometimes it can uh, bring even, you know, quite strong reaction. And it's like, where did that even come from? Or it can be something, you know, from a long time ago. Um, but but the, the body holds emotions. And we have amazing, amazing um, techniques and, and ways of dealing with avoiding going there if it's deeply uncomfortable. And for example, practitioners such as Gabo Mate will talk very much about uh, a trauma and addiction um, and how we go into kind of addictive um, patterns to avoid going into the discomfort. Um, and we'll use substances, even, um, you know, uh, things like uh, food and eating 
you know, stopping uh, the actual feeling. Um, things like, um, you know, uh, dopamine rewards. So um, we can use, um, you know, uh, shopping, uh, gambling, porn, you know, these kind of things that give us like quick kind of endorphic releases and stop us going with the with what's actually held in the body what's what, like what is that knot in there and why why have I still got that knot in there what's what, what is that about and basically it's an emotion so if you think of the word e motion e is is, is another um uh, alpha uh, symbol for, for for the body e motion so so the body and motion it's supposed to, if you imagine like a spiral, it's supposed to come out. The emotion is, is to be expressed. And what Peter Levine would say in his book um, called uh, Waking the Tiger is that civilization or society and how we've structured society has prevented as you know we've become so so um so rules um and these are these are this is socially acceptable this isn't it's prevented us from being in full authentic self-expression of our grief of our rage of our joy of our you know really strong fucking ah, emotions um you know and that we for example if you think now we go to a funeral uh we stand you know we um, pay our respects, but there isn't a actual space to have grief, to have rage, to express, you know, anger, um, confusion. There isn't a place for that that's socially acceptable. Um, so everyone just goes and gets pissed or something after, Do you know, that's the, that's the kind of like social lubricant to stop us all, you know, completely like losing the plot or, or whatever way that people people do that but what I what I see in the culture that that I live in is um uh, you know the only time that people are having these these con these conversations of actual authentic expression is whenever the inhibitions are dying with with the substance such as alcohol um so except for example I'll be out and someone will say oh I need to tell you all about my my uh sex life right now well not now just phone up and arrange a consultation you know they want to tell you if they've had a few a few glasses you know isn't it amazing i love that that social lubricant as you call it you know that it takes that to get over the speed bump if you like or the emotional bump you know to make it okay which is mm -hmm. it's kind of it's tragic in some ways when you when you put it that way mm -hmm. well you, you just step back and watch you know, general conversations day to day to day. And you watch how many of the conversations are, these are the things I'm supposed to say. <laughs> um, and these are the kind of general chit chat, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and you'll see that, that kind of conversation level. Um, but where are the spaces that we can authentically express our desires our rage, our hurt, our wants, all, all these places, where can we authentically go? Um, and, you know, if you think back to kind of like, you know, primal days, if you think how we evolved, you know, there would have been, um, you know, collective kind of ceremonies or, or, or spaces where we could, you know, and, you know, you know, definitely, you know, would ended up in like, uh, you know, fisticuffs or like rage or, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know, would have happened because, um, because that is the full expression of, of self. But Peter Levine would say that we've actually contained, contained ourselves so much. Um, so, so, so Peter Levine uh, in his, in his, his description would talk about how come in the wild, um, you can have an animal, and um, the animal is so so he's, he's working with trauma and the animal is chased and attacked and and chased to, within an inch of its life and it escapes and why does this animal like an antelope for example not have ptsd and uh, you know need to go for counseling and, and you know can't cope with their life and getting flashbacks and everything else maybe they do maybe there's an antelope um you know support group and they all sit around and talk i don't know um but but what would it be like um, if we were more like the wild? And he, he watched different um, creatures, um, you know, going through adversity. Uh, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, animals go through, you know, 
really severe um, violence, um, rape, unwanted, unwanted. Um, you know, so so they they go through like the range of, of, of things that happen in animal is is extreme, but the, but the PTSD is not there. Um, but the PTSD is there for 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 humans. So what is that? What is that about? And he 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 explored it more and more and more, and he watched what happens to the nervous system of an animal. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, like it being chased, uh, like an antelope being chased by a tiger, but they'll, they'll pull them down and they'll have them and the, the, the uh, creature will either, um, they'll go, their, their, their polyvagal, theory, uh, polyvagal uh, nervous system will kick in. They'll just like, they'll just, um, they'll, they'll freeze. And if they can get away, um, so they'll pretend to be dead. And if they can get away, uh, uh, they jump up and it's like a it's like a spring action. It's like they kind of like uh, bounce away, or like if you've seen like a dog, they'll like shake it off, or a cat, you know, they'll they'll they'll, they'll do something to kind of. And what that is is um, the cortisol and the, the adrenaline and all the all the kind of things that are in the in the body are shaken out of the body. So the trauma is being sequenced through the body, and the body has a chance to kind of shake out that. Um, that tension and that and, and sequence that pattern so it's like it's it's finished it's finished the pattern and what Peter Levine is saying is that in the wild we have an opportunity to to sequence our trauma and and express it and he watched all different animals and the only place that he saw animals having um trauma or anxiety or PTSD uh, is in a man-made structure such as a zoo. Yeah. So this is when the elephants are starting to do that and 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 get. And that's because they haven't got the ability to act as if they would in the wild. They haven't got the space to do that. So what my question then is what have we created in our in how we socialize children in how we um you know uh, educate children and and ourselves um to be um the best functioning um most evolved humans what have we missed for people's capacity to safely fully express and sequence what they actually are feeling. And that is something that I think we, as, as an evolved culture, need to look at in ourselves. Where can we fully authentically express our yes, our no, our hurt and our rage? Where can we do that? And, you know, this is what's happening in, um, for example, in dysfunctional relationships, and uh, you know, when, when people are, um, you know, how people are parenting their children, all this stuff, and, 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 and when people actually go into um, rage and, and anger because they cannot, they don't have a safe space to fully express it. Um, so, what does the question you did ask was what, what, how does somatics? support that so the, the school of somatics is is really an exploration of the emotions and memories and associations that are held in the body at any one time so so if i was doing a somatic exploration with you right now i'd be saying Okay, and as we talk about that, what are you noticing in your body right now? What are you feeling in your body? Okay, and you may say, actually, so I'm just going to describe for myself right now. Actually, I feel like kind of dry in the back of my mouth um, and like kind of butterflies in my stomach. And I'm actually feeling the shoulder blades a little bit, you know, uh, tight, uh, you know, and, 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 and sort of... Um, you know, just a little bit like uh, poised, ready for kind of what might happen. So, so I'll say, okay, okay. So let's um, see what it's like to um, feel the weight of your feet on the ground. 
and the weight of your pelvis in the chair. And let's see what it's like to breathe into that support for your body. And then let's see what it's like to breathe into the back of the lungs. And just notice what happens to your shoulders as you breathe into the back body. what's that like now? So you're bringing people on a journey into the felt sense of the body, where they are in terms of the nervous system. So uh, sympathetic arousal is, is fight or flight and anxiety. And as we relax the nervous system and the person feels a sense of safety, we bring the body into parasympathetic nervous system so so down regulated safe relaxed more authentic in in how they're expressed so less kind of pensive and what's going to happen next more grounded and this is where the work happens this i so i i i spend some of my sessions working from getting people from there to there and that is that is somatics. So so awareness of the nervous system, awareness of the motion, capacity to regulate your nervous system, capacity to regulate your emotions, so self-regulation. And through awareness, so the body conscious, through awareness, when we bring awareness into our bodies, we bring choice. So I'm I'm I noticed that my shoulders were hunched. I'm bringing awareness. I'm not saying force your shoulders down. I'm just bringing awareness. Oh, my shoulders are hunched. Okay. What's that like? And then just through that awareness, give you an option when your body feels safe to change how you're holding your body. That, that level of awareness is great. Even just, to, as you say, to take the time and, and verbalize, I suppose, or to turn the eye in on itself and just be observing of your state of your, you know, almost your emotional tense tension. Is it, is that a, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 When you, when you talked about feeling there, does feeling typically come from one location or can you feel, you know, cause as, as you're describing, you know, um, you know, sort of tension being held and, things being held in the nervous system, I mean, is that throughout the body or does it all come back? Do, do you feel from one area? That's a great question. And it, it really depends. What I find is that I would call a lot of the people that come to see me have disconnect. So they almost don't have the words to describe what's there. So sometimes I'd say, what do you notice in your body? And the most common thing would be mm, nothing, you know, or, you know, just a bit, you know, got a sore shoulder. And it's much easier to say something is like medically wrong or, yeah, you know, my back's really tight, you know. It's much easier to talk about our, our medical um, uh, kind of, you know, physicality than to go into, actually, I just feel this like, Heaviness here is something I just I can't explain what it is, but it's just feel like a bit of a uncomfortable. Don't know what it is. So 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 where does it come from in the body? It really depends on the person's uh, ability to map, or 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 a person's ability to know the felt sense in their body. So the more that we repeat this. So if you think about the neural pathways all, all the time, the more that we repeat a practice, whether it's learning to play an instrument, yoga, anything like that, the more that we repeat a practice, the more that we learn to sit, read the signals from the body, okay? So if you did this for like five minutes every morning, okay? You can meditate or you can you know, practice some somatic awareness and just literally um, do a body scan and just notice what you notice 
from the tips of your feet all the way up um, through, through your body. Just notice what's there, okay? It's so, 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 so beautiful, so simple. But you, rather than taking all the, all, all the uh, resources of how you are from here, what's it like to tune into this ancient, amazing system that's worked through <laughs> millions of years and evolved through so much adversity. Um, or or as, as one of the uh, pictures in my studio says, listen to your body, it's smarter than you are. So what's it like to tune in to, to your body? So it come from anywhere in the body, but really it depends on our ability to tune in and our use of language and our ability to communicate that. And that takes time. It really does. It really takes time. Uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Betty Martin, would say, we have to notice what the body is experiencing. So that's one, one part that takes time. Then we have to value what the body is noticing. So we might say, actually, I feel that, but it doesn't really matter because I'm busy here with this and I've got this deadline to do, or you know, I've got lots of kids to drop off and blah, blah, blah. So, so you, have, you, you can notice it, right? You can value it. So um, I've got really sore throat, but I have to go to work and I have to do all these things and I just have to go Christmas shopping because it's just have to. So you, 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 you notice it, but you override it and you don't listen. So you don't value it. And then the third thing that has to happen is um, communication. And then we have to, to, to speak it. So, um, and these, these, these three steps, notice, value, communicate, are, there are hurdles at every step. Uh, so there may be barriers to noticing, there may be barriers to valuing, um, and this is really, really, this is where it comes into play, especially when we're connecting with another person in our bodies. How do we value what our body uh, is experiencing and wants um, as much as or more than the other person's desires and wants? And this is when this whole kind of um, uh, dance comes into play. And then how do we communicate that? So I do work with a lot of people, but actually, especially if you hold here, 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 you'll feel it. Getting the words out to actually say, no, I don't want that, or I feel really uncomfortable with that, can be so, so difficult, especially if we're socialized to agree, to be helpful, to be useful, to be polite, um, go on, give your auntie a kiss, you know, go and do these things that you're supposed to do and your body's going, oh, you know, I don't want to do it. And we're th taught, you know, go on, just just, just push yourself in there and, and the whole body is going, mm. there's a reason why. And it's so beautiful when you tune into the wisdom of your body. What is that about? What is that about? And just take a few moments to be with that and go, okay, I can feel that. And I notice that that's there. What, what is that? What is that about? I'm curious, are people typically underexpressed or overexpressed? So I always do an assessment when people come in to see me and quite often people come in and they have a lot of words. Right, okay, they've got a lot of words and they have a story. Okay, they have these are things happening to me, these are all the things, da, 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 these are all the, and then this, and then this, and this, and then and that, and then, blah, blah, blah. And they'll have like a whole thing, right? And while they're talking to me, I maybe make a few notes, but I'm watching. I'm watching the pause, the breath, the posture. Um, and I'm watching the speed at which people, people move, okay? And sometimes I'll say, okay, so let's just um, sit with that for a moment and take a breath. And they're like, this is weird. And, um, and uh, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll teach them about, um, so if you wanna relax your body, um, the inhale is the accelerator. 
And then the exhale is the break. So every time we breathe in, our heart rate actually speeds up. And every time we breathe out, our heart rate actually slows down. So we have this beautiful wave of inhale and exhale, okay? So what I support people to do is a four, seven breath. So I'll invite you to breathe in for four. And I'll invite you to breathe out for seven. And then I'll say, what's that like? And I'll be like, mm, it's a bit weird. It's a bit, it's a bit too long for me to breathe out. I didn't have enough air and, you know, all that. So they'll say that. Um, but but I'll, 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 get, I'll get the four, seven breath going a couple of times. And just in that pause and that stillness, it's funny, we spoke about this as well, how the conversation changes gear. And they maybe start to speak from a different place. So they might be having less words, but for me, it's more authentic because they're in a more relaxed state and they're not uh, on guard. And what should I say? What's it safe to say? I have all these things I need to tell you and you know, I need to get it in because then I've got to go here and I've got an appointment. They, um, they, they actually come down and begin to speak from here. So, so in the question, are people over-expressing or under-expressing? I would say in the main, people are over-expressing, but maybe in, not from the place of their authentic truth. And often the slower and longer the pause. So if someone makes a request and, uh, you know, can you help me, can you help me move my car? If you, if you have a request made, um, so you feel the ask and you notice where it is in your body and our automatic response is, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll help you know, do, do that now. Okay. So, so when you get a request, notice how the request lands, okay, on you, okay? And just take a breath with the request. And just go, okay. So that's the request. And how do I feel about that request? And yeah, I've got time. Yeah, they've helped me before. Yeah, I feel like I can do that with a with a yeah and, and so you'll you'll respond from a more authentic place but what i find is um often people are responding from a should i should do this i should do all these things and this is what i should do rather than their authentic wants desires really and and then when we keep going into the, sh the should this is where and we're not communicating our authentic wants and desires and you can see how this translates over into intimacy, this is where we move into resentment because we're actually doing something that we don't really want to do. And we're a bit pissed off at them because you're always asking me to help you with this. And like, you've, you know, that last time you didn't do, you know, but we don't say that we go, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, come on, let's get it done. And we, we, we do what we think we should do to be polite. And we don't actually speak our authentic uh, truth. Um, so what's it like to slow down, say what you mean, rather than what you think you should say? That's it's so powerful, isn't it? And, and yet, you know, it's almost as though our culture rewards speed uh you know fast responses you know quick you know get, get get it done get it done it's almost as if we are, you know if you look how, how, how we're socialized now compared to 100 years ago it's almost as if we're accelerating ourselves 
oh, I feel a bit tired. Okay, we'll have a coffee or an energy drink and then you'll be able to keep up with this like constant demands and constant requests um, that, that, you know, that you'll be paid really well if you keep saying yes to things um, and doing every possible thing that, that you can possibly fit into one day, then, you know, you'll, you'll probably be able to, you know, get 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 qualified and get a really good job and, and you know you'll be financially rewarded and the more you ignore what your body's actually asking for and what you want then you'll be able to you know um, have a nice house and you know uh, you know get, get a car you know the things that you want to do so the more you time you spend um uh you know being rewarded for ignoring your body you know is that's that's what our, our, our culture is rewarding people are seen as successful if they do 20 million things in a day and totally override their entire nervous system and body, like, oh yeah, you know, I'm really tired, but I just got up and did it anyway, you know, and it's like, mm, you know, and, um, you know, I, I can speak to this from experience because it's kind of how I ended up in this whole thing. About, uh, about 10 years ago, nine, or maybe about eight or nine years ago, um, I, I, I basically um, had a complete burnout, like completely, like I was, I was working, like, so, so my marriage had broke up. I was working um, as a senior practitioner in the trust and I had all these reports to do and I got this um, like rash on my face and like heat rash and, and like the most intense migraine. And I was like, yeah, but I have to keep getting this report done. I have, you know, it has to be in, you know, I have to like deadlines and everything else. And you have the pressure then of, you know, families and whatever, not, you know, getting a service or whatever. So it's really, really, you know, demanding emotionally, physically in, in every way. And, you know, my own home life was chaos as well. So, so I was, I was, I was dealing with all this stuff and I, I hadn't really processed emotionally some of the things that I, I was going through. And, um, I basically collapsed and ended up in hospital um, on, on a drip and they um, and they uh, they thought I had uh, meningitis because I had like real like sensitivity to light and they were treating me for three days for meningitis but it turns out it wasn't meningitis and I was in there for 10 days and they actually didn't know they said they didn't know what it was but and, 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 and I, uh, you know, I went home and I was exhausted for about a year after that whole thing. And I had to just keep lying down and anything I did, I had to just keep resting. And basically it was my body's way of giving me a giant, massive kick up the arse and go, will you listen to us? Because we're trying to tell you that you're not, you're not processing your emotions. You keep doing too much. You're saying yes to everyone. You're not, you're not listening to, you know, when you need to say no. And it just literally kicked my legs from under me. Where literally I could not leave bed. Um, and if we continue to ignore our body, your body will find a way to make you listen. And or whatever else, and keep it. You know, it'll shout louder and louder and louder and 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 you know it, it's it's very very you know nature is very very intelligent it will let you know and why i love my work is because i'm supporting people to become more and more aware of what they need so so when i when i really went deep into what i what i needed i became more I could see the connection between overgiving, um, you know, it, it, what I ate, um, ev everything that I put in my body, alcohol, whatever it was, um, any substance, I could see the impact of that on my body more and more clearly. Um, like for example, the, the contraceptive pill and things like that. The more that you do this work, the more that you can see exactly what's what you, you you can see with more clarity what you need but also you can see the impacts of your of your choices on your body more um and certainly my my own yoga practice has really supported me in that because it's really enabled me to come home to the breath and and in stillness find that balance and that harmony within my own body um, but certainly um, that's for, for me this 
stress and 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 um, not listening are the fundamental roots of dis-ease and, and sickness in our culture and in our society. With, I suppose, the work that you did previously and then the work you do now, I mean, do they... Uh -huh. Do they come from a similar place um, in terms of, and I suppose well, to be clear, with the, I suppose with the social work inside, I mean, I'm assuming there's a lot of trauma there. And then sort of more what's coming across the work that you do now is not direct trauma per se, but it's, it's a frustration or a lack or something there that they maybe just can't, they're trying to solve as such. Are they yeah, coming from a so. similar place yeah. or? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. And I'd say if my if I looked it through even, you know, before I trained in social work and all the things that I've got involved with through my life, what I would say is my desire, my key um, kind of core wish is to support people or equip people with the tools that they need to reach their full potential. That is that is that is a that is that it would be my key. You know, I think that's my key mission in life is to, to, to I, 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 I want to resource myself and in resourcing myself. So, so I think beforehand, I would like burn myself out trying to support other people. And what I've learned through, through that episode uh, where my body kicked me back was to, if I don't resource myself, I don't, it's like, you know, I don't have the capacity to support other people and uh, you know, show other people um, some of the tools that, 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 that work. And certainly when I was working you know, for, um, with, with, with children who had experienced neglect and abuse, that, you know, I, had so, I had a certain amount of toolkit and knowledge about attachment and, and child development and everything else. I, I had that awareness. And, and that, that's really, really useful. There's a lot of really, there's a lot of really good uh, information there and, 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 and theory and, and amazing, amazing um, research and, and wisdom, which I guess underpins a lot of what I do. But, but and, and my ethos there was to support people to, 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 to really reach their full potential. I'm, I'm a big advocate for social justice. I think there's so much structural inequality and you know, disadvantage. And I really believe that if people have access to the right tools, they can really flourish and thrive. And what my key, key core passion is, is to support people to um, have access to that uh, information so that they can make the best choices for themselves. Um, and certainly with, with working with somatics and intimacy and sexuality, what I'm supporting people to do is really um, be the best, have the best uh, version of their life that, th that they can have. So, um, you know, empowering vo choice and voice, um, really giving people an authentic self-expression, a little bit like what, what you're doing with this podcast, you know, giving people that, that, that platform to really shine and, and be who they are. Um, because we have so many messages externally about what, what, what we should be. Um, but, do you know, uh, what would it be like to really listen to what you, you, you want? Um, so yeah, there, there's certainly um, a, a, an overlap in my two careers and a lot of the skills that I had from, from um, you know, my previous training, um, go into the training that I have as a systematic sex educator now, I, I would say that um, very different, but very similar. Hmm. When you talk there about, you know, that sort of, as you say, your body, your body putting you down and basically teaching you a lesson per se, I mean, is that, does that come from holding on to emotion or to not letting it go through or over serving? I mean, what, what do you reflect back on now? How do, how do you see it? it? All, all of those ticked, all those boxes. But, you know, when I look at my family, um, and sometimes your family, you know, it's like so triggering because it's like such a great big set of mirrors. And I look how I was socialized and particularly, you know, growing up in the seventies and eighties in, in Belfast. Um, I grew up in North Belfast and 
people were experiencing, you know, you know, if you think about how our parents socialized us, you know, there, there was so much, um, there, there, we, we grew up in a violent society and there was so much suppressed and not discussed because we couldn't fully, safely express our grief, rage, you know, anything like that. So we, 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 we've all experienced um, deep, deep loss, hurt, um, unjust, unjust um, violence. And, you know, even if, if you didn't, didn't, didn't experience directly in, in your family, you know, it's in our environment. And that inability to express what we're holding on to is, is in all of us. And certainly it's in how I was socialized. So if I look at my, um, you know, for example, my parent, you know, you don't talk about that. No, that's not, you know, no, not, you know, we're going here now and you don't say anything about that. Um, and, and certainly how we are, were socialized was about around safety and where it was safe to say, for example, my dad taught Gaelic, where it was safe to say that your dad taught Gaelic, you know, because it just wasn't a safe thing to say. So, um, so there, there, you know, we, we, were, we were contained, we were measured, we were composed, but we had all this stuff carrying around. And we are, Belfast is a trauma city. We are, um, that we have a legacy of trauma and hurt. And until we learn to deal with it, um, and, 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 and here's the thing, you know, Pete, I, I, I've lived, I've lived abroad and I've lived, you know, in the UK, um, you know, for a long time. And, it, you know, there is something that brought me back to Belfast and to do this work in Belfast, because when I was a little girl, everyone was moving away. Everyone was going to university. Everyone just wanted to get the fuck out of Belfast because it was just there was just nothing there. We didn't even have any good gigs or any, you know, it was just like, you know, so everyone who had that just left. But for me, I I love where I'm from. I love the people. I think we have real authentic expression and, and, and pure love in our hearts. And there's something in for me that where I just wanted to come home and support the people who have experienced this life um, to understand ways to cope with this life that are um, real. And that's, you know, you know, sexuality and intimacy are certainly part of it, but it even goes deeper to like, when I look at how my, 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 my mother, for example, or her, her family deal with things, they just don't ever talk about emotions because if they went there, it's just like, you know, massive, massive. And where, how can we create that space for us to authentically and safely express these suppressed deep wounds and losses? Well, how, how can we create that? And where can we, you know, how can we become more conscious of what's actually underpinning our, our, our ability? And I, I, you know, I have people come in and literally, I have to peel them off the ceiling. They are so like, you know, totally traumatized. And, 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 and when it comes down to it, um, I had a case where a, a guy came in and, you know, he's like in his seventies. He was quite high up um, in, in um, you know, organization and, and, and violence. And he had complete, absolute PTSD. You know, there was no two ways about it. And he said, oh, it's really affecting my intimacy. And I'm thinking, you know, it's affected everything. And he goes, you know, bad things have happened. I can't, I can't talk about it. But over a period of about 18 months, this, the depth that we were able to go to and the emotions that came out and the regret and the sadness and the loss that came out through this work, then when he started to tune into his body, then it became, uh, it's almost like the soil for the, the seeds to flourish. Um, and I, 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 I teach... Um, uh, you know, part of part of part of the social work training is about Maslow's Maslow's theory, really, really old theory from the fifties, the hierarchy of need. And Maslow talks about um, development, 
um, from, from here right up to self-actualization self where human reaches their full developmental peak. Um, the first rung on the ladder is safety. And we didn't have that as a culture. We did not have safety. And we are healing and we are working and we are evolving and we are learning and we are, you know, with time, um, really beginning to feel, um, you know, safe and building bridges and, and really um, doing the work. The, you know, there is massive, massive amount of work. But literally, I've had people come in and go, oh, I'm not traumatized, like chain smoking, drinking, you know, completely like and talking like this, you know, and like, you know, on every type of medication. But they say, you know, oh, the troubles didn't affect me. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, wow, you're so in it that you actually can't see it. And certainly that is, is such a, 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 a key underpinning of, of what I do. And I mean, when I, when I uh, first started to practice, I hired a therapy room um, uh, with, um, you know, from a little sort of well-being studio and I hired a therapy room and that was great. But um, in the end, myself and a, a psychotherapist who does embodied uh, counseling, um, so she works with the felt sense in the body, we decided to get this space together. And the studio started off as two little tiny um, therapy rooms. Um, and a year ago, I took another floor um, and made it into um, a workshop space. So it's a yoga studio and a room and an, another therapy room. So we have we have two floors now, um, right, right, right in the middle of Botanic. And really what I want the space to be is um, a space for embodied well-being in Belfast, a space that is safe, where people can come and do anything that promotes embodiment. So we got, um, you know, um, we got all the yoga mats and, and cushions and everything else, but a space where we can really um, begin to learn and grow, connect. And it's been so difficult, you know, with with the current um, situations and restrictions, but the community that has built up from that and the people that are doing different offerings. So we'll do um, um, Qigong, um, there's, there's breath work, um, I will do, I'll bring different teachers in from the UK and Canada and, and really run different events and workshops. Uh, we did one on uh, death, um, a four day workshop on death and grief, um, just supporting people and giving them skills to support people who are going through the bereavement process. So, so I, I work with sexuality, but body conscious has actually mushroomed into being anything. So I'll, I'll, I'll hire the space out to different um, therapists um, who do all different types of, of uh, body work um, and counseling. And really um, what, what the space is, is really a place for people to um, come home to their body. Just like, just like I came home to Belfast, is like come home. And, and what, what's, what's there is, is real, it's true. And that is the first rung of authentic self-expression. And that only when we've done that are we connecting with other humans, whether it's in sex, whether it's in um, you know, our, our relationships in, in wider society, we are connecting from our authentic space, like our actual true, true selves. Um, yeah. Do you, would you classify yourselves as intuitive? No. No, I just um, have so much work to do on myself um, and it never stops. I never want to stop uh, learning. Um, I'm always um, working on myself. I'm always doing my own practice. Uh, I, I absolutely love people. I think people are incredible. Uh, I think people have 
so much. I think I, I think we are just the most amazing things ever. And we have so much richness and diversity and we have so much to give and contribute to each other. And I think that if we look at human potential, I think we have so much untapped that we, we just haven't even got to in terms of how we function as a society, how we support each other and how we facilitate authentic full expression. I think we have we have so much more to give and to do. And the space, the studio space really is, it's so important to me that it was in Belfast um, because it's, it's a space for that to happen in a city that needs it so much. So we've got so many shops, we've got so many pubs, we've got so many distractions, but what about a space to come home and be with yourself and other people in an authentic way. And when when you're working with other people, do you are you able to sort of, as you say, once you've got them off the ceiling and calm them down, are you able to find yourself able to connect with them? I mean, is that your role to connect with them, or is it simply just to let them unfold themselves? So I, um, I, I am an educator and I support people. So it's a somatic educator. So I'll support people to connect with themselves and I'll support them to bring awareness into the barriers to connecting with themselves. And then the barriers that, uh, that, that, that they, because quite often we put them in our own way. We do it to ourselves. Um, uh, yeah, I could say so much more about that, um, but uh, massive more, that's a whole new, another podcast, but quite often we, we, we put the things there ourselves and people will um, have quite uh, amazingly complex uh, ways of stopping you getting, <laughs> getting it or getting themselves to, 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 the, to that place. Um, it's almost as if, you know, I'm scared to really fully shine and be the best, the, the best possible version of myself. Um, so yeah, I mean, it does, the most important thing that I can um, provide is a container, uh, of safety, of non-judgment, of witnessing, of being with, so that they can land and, and, um, become more aware of, of, of who they are. Statement of being afraid to fully shine. It's it's so loaded, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, but it's that's that thing, isn't it? Uh you know, even in our culture, you know, um, you know, when you're growing up at school, it was like, look at look at your man. What a, you know, it was like, look, what a dick. You know, if you did anything that was like in any way different, it was like completely like, you know, um, you know, you had the piss taken out of you, you know, it was like not, you know, it was not cool, it was not okay, you know, and I mean, kids are ruthless, you know, um, but also they're incredible, you know, they're absolutely on fire and they have all this possibility, you know, bubbling away and this incredible, you know, um, resilience and resourcefulness and intelligence. Um, and, you know, what if we had the conditions rather than, um, contracting and and shaming and controlling and, and and dictating what if we had the conditions that each human could actually be excited exactly what you're doing here excited about the thing that excites them expressive about the thing that expresses them and and say no that's not what i want to do i want to do this this is what is i'm here for this is my um points of being on this earth is this this is what i love um what if we supported that and we created the environment for people to really um be them and that comes from safety safety is the, the bottom rung and and certainly um that that is my is the, the, the underpins every piece of work that i do um, the, the, you know, the, one of the first things that I, I support people is um, noticing when you're going into enduring or out of full consent. So, so um, I mean, there's a whole workshop, 
think a five day workshop or six month training on the wheel of consent. Um, but the, 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 that we, um, we often go outside of our consent in interactions and supporting people to come home, to notice what they want, value what they want, communicate what they want and stay in their authentic self-expression uh, is, is powerful. And when we become more and more aware of ourselves, more and more body conscious, we step into what we, who we are, because we're all so unique and diverse, that's the beauty. And we step into what is actually right for us, um, rather than what we think someone else thinks we should do. Hmm. How, have you any concept of how sort of, I'm going to call it sort of Western culture became so different to Indian culture, you know, any sort of Eastern cultures, if you like, we wouldn't do an East versus West. Mm -hmm. Any concept of how it became so different? We celebrate differently. We, we appreciate differently. We, we talk differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, organized religion has a lot to answer for. You know, and we, uh, you know, our culture, um, you know, uh, certainly, um, you know, I've, I've moved away from from um, uh, organized religion because, you know, growing up here, you see so much, you know, entrenchment and, and, and uh, you know, people kind of thinking that they're different <laughs> because of some, um, you know, perceived um, cultural indoctrination. Um, but actually, you know, it's, it's like a mirror. We're just like mirrors of each other, um, with different colours. And um, and uh, it's it's just um, I I think organised religion has a lot. And if you look at uh, how, for example, Christianity worked and how it worked to um, it, you know. Uh, take away all of the old and kind of ancient traditions around, um, uh, for example, paganism, uh, women self-organizing using herbs, you know, they burned witches, uh, you know, they, 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 they demolished, um, you know, old um, sort of sacred wells, all this stuff and built churches on them. It, 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 you know, we are working within the Judeo-Christian kind of um, teaching and calendar. But then, you know, we look at other religions and, and they can be, you know, equally as destructive. Um, but I, I do think that people now, because we have access to like such a big, massive range of, of, of information and content, you know, people are realizing, oh, actually, you know, I might, might be more Buddhist, actually, than... than any kind of you know people are kind of being able to kind of mix and match and and and, and learn about different um uh, you know theories and doctrines um and then when we with knowledge it becomes empowerment and also more awareness of perhaps we were taught one channel of information and actually there's so many you know we just tune the radio and there's so many other channels uh, available but we're just you know so used to kind of one 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 version um and there isn't one version of the truth the truth is there's, there's as many versions of the truth as there is humans and and and, and objects and, and everything else so um yeah just 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 the, the, the beauty and all that and the, the amazingness of, of, of um diversity and um the richness of of how we have evolved um, over thousands of years and all these old ancient texts that we can we can access but really for me it's noise and uh, for me the authenticity of who we are in our divinity and in our amazingness is when we come and spend time with our body and and you know we have pleasure pleasure in our body pleasure is so beautiful it's so healing it's so uh, it supports the immune system, more, uh, more resilience, more uh, connectedness, uh, oxytocin for bonding. Uh, you know, we are we are we are capable of so much range of of of, of sensations and and, and self-expression. And when we when we step into 
uh, our full pleasure. And that can be, you know, having things that we desire. And it's not just, you know, about sex and orgasm. It can be all different things. Um, life just gets better and better and better. Uh, and um, yeah, um, sometimes I think when I, when I see someone really angry or I see someone really tense or frustrated, I think, oh, you know, you just need some pleasure. And it's really, <laughs> you know, it just, it's must have been a while since you had some pleasure. So um, I'll try and give them compassion for that. That's really interesting. I mean, pleasure, I'd never really sort of isolated it as a, uh, is it a sense of this emotion? I can't, I can't quite get my head around it now. Um, is it a mixture of everything? I can't, what is it? <laughs> so, it's the senses celebrating being alive. So we have, you know, we have touch, we have taste, we have, you know, we have, we have all these senses, you know, we visual, um, and we have all these senses gone, wow, you know, being alive is amazing. Uh, and we, you know, there's so much beauty uh, and incredibleness in life. And it can literally be like having the most amazing, like bowl of soup and going, oh, this is just, you know, so good. You know, it can be, it can be, anything um but certainly um um i i i guess i i, I want to bring in one other thing uh pete which is which is the importance of of um nature and people would say to me sometimes you know how do i you know how do i promote embodiment do i need to you know do yoga do i need to do all these things and i say actually you're um your your receptors and, and in your nervous system will actually regulate if you just go outside and go in nature and that was one of the beautiful things that happened at the start of this year wasn't it everyone started going outside because everything's closed <laughs> and everyone's like oh yeah let's, let's all go for walks and, and everyone's like going on walks and everyone's going to the same place at the same time for these walks um but like, look what happens. People started going, actually, this is amazing. Let's do this more. And, you know, having more time and less, um, less to do in it and spending more time in nature, we start to get into the natural flow of how we evolved. And you see, like, nature doesn't, like, zoom around, like, doing 20 million things it like does one thing really really beautifully and it really you know it is the essence of that thing you know it could be a bud it could be a river but it is the essence of that that, that beautiful thing is like wow you know so so one thing i say to people is 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 get outside and and um and really breathe and as you're outside you know experiencing the five senses you know feeling the way it, breathing with it and really smelling and 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 and, and go with, with 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 being like fully alive um and that that to me um is is what body conscious is it's it's really is being fully in choice and fully reaching your potential and connecting with the incredibleness that we are um and we are so awesome what excites your desires? So, <clears throat> I, I have not choice having choice in my life excites my desires and having the ability to take time to make that choice. But I, I in, in terms of my client work, when I hear that someone has had a change in how they are, I just, it just brings me so much joy to get like feedback that the work that they've put in has actually benefit benefited them. That just really feels, um, yeah, I'm doing exactly the right work, and I'm supporting people to reach their full potential. So that that thing about 
you know, self-actualization and being the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. But but for my own my own um, uh, life is 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 you know having the time and and it's such a luxury to have the time to be with my choice um and it's 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 takes it's taken me a long time to be able to create that but i would say that i'm i've been able to you know put that in place now where i can say yes to things and no to things and that wasn't the case for a long time you know mm. yeah so are you where you're supposed to be right now yeah yeah and that you know who knows you know, it's always evolving and changing, but I'm always checking in and I'm mm. deeply, deeply content and deeply happy and so blessed. If we were to, you know, you're firing the belly in one or two words, what would that be? Being fully alive. Nice, I like it. It's three words, but I'll let you away with it. <laughs> Do you, how can people reach out to you, get in touch with you, follow you? So uh, you can follow Body Conscious Studio on Instagram or Facebook. Um, D Larson Belfast is my. Um, personal Instagram or Facebook and um, the studio and myself have a website as well so if you google it it will probably pop up somewhere um, and yeah I'm particularly interested in people who are interested in what I'm interested in and might have ideas for collaboration um, for using the space for um, a better Belfast um, anything educational for embodied well-being, um, supporting our trauma history, connecting people. And yes, I know it's difficult right now, but um, we're not going anywhere. Um, and actually more and more important than ever that we connect and, and develop resources to support people. Amazing opportunity, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like if you can't... If you can't do stuff um, outwardly, you have to do stuff inwardly. Um, mm. So it's like a, it's like a preparation time, getting getting things ready um, for when when the blossoms come in, in, in the future. So yeah, loads of, loads of time to um, have those really rich. Or you could potentially write a book. That would be a good thing to do. <laughs> um, so so all those things that um, uh, you know you've, you 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 moan that you've never had the time to do. Um, I think this is the time to do them. And that is that is really what the space is for. Um, I really, um, it's super affordable space. So I've kept everything so that people can be experimental with the um, offerings that they have. Because quite often I find that it's hard to get things off the ground because you're worried about them not uh, being financially successful. Um, and it takes the time for things to seed. So if you've got ideas, if you've got things, please come and talk to me because um, we have uh, people that really want to um, attend things and um, um, yeah, I want to hear more about uh, what, what people want to offer in our beautiful home city. Thank you. Do you have a final message you'd like to leave us with? Have the most beautiful, incredible day and live every uh, moment in life to the fullest. And um, if you don't want to do something, um, don't do it. A great message to leave with. Dave, thank you so much. I really appreciate you and thank you for being here. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day.